see as being the um, sort of coincident factor that has led to the large-scale adoption or larger-scale adoption of ETFs only in the last five years? I, I think it's been the fact that investors are looking at ETFs as, as a tool um, rather than looking at mutual funds. Um, it, it's, a, it's, a great, it's a great vehicle. Um, if you haven't already been invested in, in the space, ETFs are a great tool. They're low cost, they're easy to access, uh, even with now with robo-advisors out there, uh, asset allocation has become a lot easier. So if you're new to the space, it, it's probably the easiest way to get into investing uh, without going through, you know, whether it's a, a broker or an advisor, this is, this is something that you can do on your own, uh, and get diversified portfolios, uh, get access to, to markets or even asset groups that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So I think that's one of the reasons why you're seeing that adoption. And, and luckily enough in Canada, we're, we're a progressive uh, space. Uh, so we don't have the same hurdles to launching uh, unique products. So act, active, we could do day one, and we, we've seen that adoption take, take place. Uh, we've had unique thematic products come to market, like marijuana, uh, uh, which I don't know would be so easy in other jurisdictions. So we have a pretty progressive uh, landscape from a regulatory standpoint that has led to some unique products coming to market. From your vantage point, what is the, what is the business like? How is the uh, sort of rate of adoption, uh, seeing as ETFs have been very popular as a passive instrument, as a passive ETF uh, or indexing choice for investors? How has the adoption of active ETFs been, seeing as you, you sort of get a, a view from 30,000 feet? I, I think surprisingly well. Um, I think investors are, are, are picking the products that meet their needs. Um, and whether it's uh, an ETF model, it, it, it works for them. You know, uh, obviously Horizons was one of the first to bring active ETFs to the right. market, and we were there to support them. And they've done a wonderful job growing that business. And I think they've been sort of the, the model child for getting active ETFs out there. Uh, you know, next you see sort of Purpose, who's sort of brought that sort of mutual fund ETF together as a family. Right. Um, and then people are starting to see that it actually works. It doesn't have to be one or the other. If you have a strong product uh, that works as a mutual fund, uh, there may be an opportunity to do it as an ETF. And if you have an ETF that's doing extremely well, that may meet uh, mutual fund re retail mutual fund clients' needs, then why not launch it in that space as well? And so I, I think you know you're going to start seeing more blurred lines between uh, the two, um, and that's just simply trying to gather or attract investors who are, are more ETF focused uh, as their as their mandate and trying to invest. They want to use ETFs. They feel that it's lower cost, more flexibility, easier to access. Uh, and especially for you do-it-yourselfers, um, it's a great, great vehicle for them to get into. Do you have a handle uh, on whether preferences towards, in terms of the active ETF business, uh, since we're on the subject, yeah. uh, do you have any sense of the preference between uh, active equity ETFs or active fixed income ETFs as being favored? Uh, I would say right now it's it's still very much fixed income focused. Right. Um, I'd say the vast majority of the assets are in the or active assets uh, is fixed income. Doesn't mean that equities won't get there, but you know while markets are doing extremely well, it, it's hard mm -hmm. to beat the the index. So you might as well be in a, a passive equity space. And you know I think if there's a downturn in the market or uh, volatility, then you know there might be a shift to more alpha driven type products in order to, to get some return there. Ron, what are your thoughts within the ETF industry? What are your thoughts on the, the race that's happening between the ETF issuers, especially particularly in the passive space, to get down to zero MER? Yeah, it, it's interesting. Uh, I, I don't know that it's necessarily a, a race to, to zero. I think it's a lot of its competition, uh, uh, fee compression. Um, Getting to zero MER will be hard. Mm -hmm. Zero management fee, uh, obviously, we, we've seen a, a prelim file with two, two ETFs that will have a zero management fee. 
but the MER is is still 17 basis points. Uh, the TER will be between 18 and 21 basis points. So trying to get a product that's a zero fee to the end investor, I think we're, we're still a, a ways off. Uh, I think it's a great headline news uh, be able to say that you, you got zero management fee. Right. Um, but, you know, the, the, the fund still needs to generate revenue for the, the manager and for the service providers who are supply, supplying it. So there is a cost of running these products. So I don't know that we'll necessarily all get to a zero, right. zero sum game. Uh, but I think if you have a, a product that you can price um, as close as possible to zero, um, it, it definitely gives you an advantage over somebody else. Uh, it, once again, HXT is the lowest ETF provide, uh, ETF in Canada at three basis points. Um, and it does well, but it's also the structure that it's, it's in that makes it a, affordable at that price. Um, so, you know, there's a race. I don't know that anybody wants to get to zero because these firms aren't looking to do things for zero. So I think it's scale, it's it's the product, it's how you, you deliver that product uh, and the underlying investments to the investor that drives the, the, the price point. And, you know, as, as we look at investors today, CSA has come out with their view on embedded commission and so DSCs are going away and um, trailers on discount brokerage has to go away. So there there is a focus on fees and yeah. I think if you have a, a low cost vehicle that you can offer uh, especially if it's in the passes space, then uh, it's in your best interest uh, to do so. Yeah, it's certainly one of the more competitive spaces uh, in the business in yeah. terms of, of of getting you know the, the passive uh, sort of commoditization of, of indexes. I think compared to ten years ago, it's almost sublime. To, it is. To yeah. See. yeah.